Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a geometry puzzle. If you like this video, please comment, like, and subscribe, and don't forget to hit the bell button for notifications. If you don't like the video, please let me know why in the comment section down below. I appreciate all kinds of feedback. Now let's get started. This, this uh, puzzle was inspired by a fellow mathematician, Roni Sarker. I'm going to share his uh, link down below in the comment section, so you'll get to see also in the description, you'll get to see his original tweet and puzzles because uh, he has a lot of good material on his Twitter page. All right, awesome. Now, what are we supposed to do? We're supposed to make some connections, obviously, right? As always. So I'm gonna drop a perpendicular here, another one here, all right? Then I'll connect these two points, which means connecting the centers. So the radius is R, so these are congruent. Basically, I'm getting a rectangle here, whose base is 2R, beautiful. So we need to associate these lengths here. My goal is to find R in terms of A, B, and C. So what I need to do is, I need to have some equations that relate them, right? And those equations are gonna come from where? From some interesting place. But we need to make more connections, okay? So one of the connections that we should always make is I'm gonna take this point and connect it to the center, obviously, right? And then drop another perpendicular this way, because as you know, we're going to get two right triangles that are congruent, that have the same hypotenuse, same legs, same everything. So basically, in other words, we're actually getting here an angular bisector. This is the center. So we can name these alpha and alpha, cool? Now let's make another connection here, a perpendicular line or segment, whatever, and then make this obvious connection too, right? And this is going to be beta and beta. Again, this is going to be an angular bisector. We have some symmetry, so on and so forth. Okay, this is cool. Now what I wanna do is I want to associate R and ABC. In order to be able to do that, I need to use some tools, obviously, and it's a really cool tool that I'm going to use today. It's called trigonometry. Trigonometry is awesome, don't you agree? So here's what we're going to do. Let's call this piece H and let's call that one K. As you know, these are right triangles. So those are the bases, basically. How can I use trigonometry to associate H and R? Well, it's tangent, right? So I'm going to use tangent. So let's change colors here, uh, maybe green. And then I don't want to make it that thick. Okay, cool. Now, I'm going to write tangent alpha. Tangent alpha is going to equal R over H. And tangent beta equals R over K. Beautiful. Now, why is this important? Well, first of all, the base is the hypotenuse, right? And it's made up of these pieces like H, 2R, and K. And it's C, so C is the longest side, which is the hypotenuse. So I can kind of associate C and R somewhat, right? That's our uh, main point basically here. Cool, so that's why I wrote these equations. Now, from here, I should be getting something helpful and I'd like to isolate the H. So H is gonna equal R over tangent alpha, okay? And K is gonna equal R over tangent beta. Now. We're gonna use these equations, but first we have to do more work, okay? Cool. Now, what is more work? Well, if you look at this triangle, I was able to write H in terms of, you know, R and tangent alpha, but what is tangent alpha? R over H? Okay, we're just gonna go around in circles if we do that. So we need to find something more meaningful. And that's gonna come from the big picture, which is the right triangle that we have here. Uh, well, the base angles are two alpha and two beta. Does that ring a bell? Yes, we're gonna use two alpha and associate it with alpha. How? I'll show you. Okay, cool. So here's what I can say from the big picture. Tangent to alpha is equal to, this is A by the way, and this is B, I forgot to say at the beginning, I guess. And this is C, shorter leg is A. So tangent to alpha is B over A, right? Tangent to alpha is equal to B over A, nice. What about tangent to beta? Similarly, well, two alpha and two beta are complementary, therefore, it's just gonna be the reciprocal, which is A over B, right? Cool, so far, so good. Now, 
what's the relationship here? Well, if I know tangent to alpha, and I know that two alpha is an acute angle, which is cool, and ABC are all positive, I can find tangent alpha. Now, normally, you can write a quadratic equation because you know there's a formula for tangent to alpha, right? Which is, um, where should I write it? Okay, here. Two tangent alpha divided by one minus tangent squared alpha. If you use this equation and set it equal to b over a, obviously you can solve for tangent alpha. You're gonna get two roots. One of them is gonna be positive. The other one is gonna be negative. If you take the positive root, you'll, you'll get the answer. But we're gonna do it in a cooler way. Okay, it's a really nice trick that's used a lot, uh, going from 2 alpha to alpha, and I just want to introduce that technique to you because it's a really cool trick. Okay, here we go. So I'm going to draw a right triangle with 2 alpha, okay, like this, and I'm going to put the givens. So this is B and this is A. As you know, in this is the same as our right triangle, looking from a different perspective, and as you know, the hypotenuse is C. Cool. Now, this is what I like to do, and this is the critical part of the trick. I'm going to extend the base as much as C, and then connect these two points, right? What am I getting? This is C, and this is C. I'm getting an isosceles triangle. Isn't that beautiful? So what is that supposed to mean? Well, it means that the base angles are congruent, and their sum from exterior angle theorem is 2 alpha. Therefore, this is alpha, and this is alpha. Beautiful. From here, what am I going to get? I'm going to get tangent alpha. Nice. Okay. Tangent alpha can be written as B over A plus C. Beautiful. Okay. You're going to see in a little bit why this is so beautiful. Okay, cool. So if I can do this for alpha, I can do it for beta as well. Similarly. But you see the trick? Well, some of you might say, hey, you can find a different expression for tangent alpha. Yes, that's true. Even before you say that, let me clarify that. Because a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. c squared or b squared can be written as c squared minus a squared. And then that can be factored by difference of two squares, so on and so forth. Yes, I know that part. That's possible. But I'm just going to focus with the uh, positive ones. Okay, cool. Let's go back to the other angle. Oopsies. And let's draw another right triangle. Okay, this time we're going to be drawing this type of triangle. This is going to be 2 beta and it's going to be A over B. Well, I didn't really necessarily draw it to scale, but that's okay. Don't worry about it. Now I'm going to expand this, right? Or extend this rather. And as you know, this is C and this is going to be C as well. And I'm going to be getting another isosceles triangle, just like the first one. And what am I getting from here? Well, this is supposed to be beta and beta. Therefore, Tangent beta is equal to A over B plus C. Very similar to the first one. The letters are just different. Different place. Okay, cool. So I got tangent alpha and tangent beta. What am I going to do with those? I'm going to go back here and substitute those. Isn't that awesome? Yes, I think it's awesome. Now, so let's go ahead and do that. And we're going to be writing. So this gives us, this actually allows us, Sorry about that. This allows us to write H in terms of A, B, C, and R, which is cool. So remember, H was equal to R over tangent alpha. And we know that, we know that tangent alpha can be written as B over A plus C. If you divide R by that, which means you're going to go ahead and multiply by the reciprocal. So it's going to look like this. Nice. So tangent alpha was replaced by b over a plus c from here, and this is what we get. Nice. Uh, if you want, you can arrange this a little bit more like this. That way, it'll be more useful. Okay, so, cool. So, basically, in other words, that little piece that we called h, remember? I can write it in terms of, uh, or I should say, as a multiple of r. Cool. Okay. I'll do the same thing here for k. Remember, k was written as r over tangent beta. If you divide r by tangent beta, which is a over b plus c, you're going to get r times b plus c over a, which can be written as b plus c over a multiplied by r. Beautiful. Now, I got the value of h. I got the value of k. Now, it's time to put those together. How do you put those together? Well, they are the pieces that make up the base, right? Look at that. Their sum is equal to C. 
Awesome. Let's go ahead and do that. So basically we have, and what we have is H plus 2R plus K is equal to C. All right, this is the critical part. Now I can replace H with this and I can replace K with this. Let's do it. So this is gonna give me A plus C over B multiplied by R and then I'll have two times R plus K which is B plus C over A times R and the sum is gonna equal C. Awesome. What am I gonna do? Well, I'll plot the R because R is a common factor. Then I should be getting A plus C over B plus two plus B plus C over A and the whole thing is equal to C, nice. What was I trying to do? Well, I was trying to solve for R and I was supposed to find it in terms of A, B, C. So we're almost there, just hang in there. What am I gonna do? Well, let's go ahead and make a common denominator. It makes sense. The common denominator would be A, B. So I can just go ahead and multiply the A plus C by A. So it's kind of like A squared plus A, C. Multiply the two by A, B, which is two A, B, and then Multiply this B plus C by B, which is going to give you B squared plus B C. And the whole thing is going to be divided by A B. And this is equal to C. Now, the fun is not over yet, so just stay tuned. We're going to finish this up in a really nice way. How? Okay, here we go. Now, as you will probably remember, this is a right triangle, right? So I can basically... Um, go ahead and write it down as, okay, I can just go ahead and write it down like, okay, I have a squared plus b squared, right? So I can just go ahead and write it down as c squared. That's one way to approach it, but I'm not going to do it. Okay, fine. Why am I not going to do it? Because there's something cooler than that. So let's go. All right, cool. So I have a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. You see that? That can be written as a plus b quantity squared. Nice. What do I have left? Well, I didn't use the AC and the BC and that can be factored out. Like I can plot the C and that gives me C times the quantity A plus B over AB and that's equal to C. See where I'm going with this? Okay, cool. Now I can plot the A plus B and then that's gonna give me A plus B plus C and that is divided by AB and is equal to C. Now I think it's time to cross multiply. Let's go ahead and do it and isolate R. So R is gonna be equal to from here, ABC divided by A plus B, multiply by the quantity A plus B plus C. And that brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you tomorrow with another video until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.